great to have you, uh, Buba Galadima, Elijah Buba Galadima. Let's go straight to it. I, I want your reactions to what happened yesterday. Uh, rule of law protest, Tonsa, another group said they were in support of the incumbent president. He, he went into a fisticuff. In fact, television station did in, in, interview the leader of the other group yesterday, and he said that the, the Dejade Yoju group and some other CSOs were abusing them, and that's why the fracas broke out. What's your take on all of this happening in Nigeria? Well, uh, I'm sorry, Rufai. Uh, I was most disheartened and uh, traumatized that uh, I could see a civilized, supposedly, a civilized country like Nigeria doing what it did. But I just want to mention that uh, no hooligan can dare do what they did yesterday without the active support of government behind them. And we should hold the government responsible. And one lesson we should learn is that Nigeria has already slided into dictatorship, and there is nothing we can do. Look at me at my age with gray hair all over, that I'm standing here or sitting here uh, to talk, to continue to talk on why Nigeria should be a better place for all of us. We are doing this fight not only for ourselves, because I have nothing to gain anymore. I am not appointable. I am not even electable. So I'm only fighting for the people. But it is the very people, Nigerians, that you fight for, that you are fighting for to better their lives, and they are fighting you. This was what we had seen yesterday. I always remind the Nigerians of what had happened during the fascist regimes in Germany. When the, the fascists came for the communists and the socialists, every German believed that because he wasn't a socialist or a communist, it had nothing to do with him. Then they came for the unionists. They started attacking them, arresting them, and killing them. All Germans <coughs> laid docile and thought they were not unionists because they don't work for government, so it had nothing to do with them, especially the church. And when they came for the church, there was nobody left to fight for them. This is the situation where Nigerians have found itself. How can any civilized society organize such a, a crime against humanity? Civil society organizations fighting for us, fighting for our rights, fighting for the rule of law, who are being treated with the extreme support, I believe, of authorities organizing hold drums, maybe paid them some money, we don't know, to do what they did. It is shameful. But in every, for every disappointment, there is good thing that comes out of it. They had done this to civil society organizations. The world is watching. And I am sure the world will speak up on the slide of Nigeria into dictatorship. Or oh, we are already in dictatorship. That is, we have been taken back to 1983. Thank you, Tunji. Well, uh, Rafai. Alaji Galadima, let me ask you, because a month ago when you were last on the show, you raised an alarm over alleged uh, plots of tenure elongation of this administration. Well, just about a week ago, a bill um, seeking six-year single tenure was thrown out of the floor of the House of Representatives. Does this assuage your fears of any tenure uh, elongation now? <laughs> then you are gullible. Uh, you don't understand Nigerian politics. It was not thrown out. You didn't hear the ruling of the deputy speaker of the House of Representatives. What he said, even though it was, th over, it was thrown out by majority of the members of the House of Representatives, in his ruling, he said this decision, this issue has been set aside, which means it can be represented. But ordinarily, according to the rules of the House of Reps, that issue is dead, cannot be brought up again under this government. I just want you to wait. The, it will still be resuscitated. Life will be injected into it. It will be activated. 
They are serious. They will get to there. And unless we speak and we stand up for our rights, unless we stand up that things must be done according to the law, that things must be done according to the rule, we are finished. Unfortunately for us, the judiciary is losing, fast losing public confidence. The security agencies have taken side over their activities. They never believe that their role and allegiance is to the state, to the Nigerian nation, not to an individual. But we have a crop of security people all over the country whose allegiance is to a transient ruler. We are all in trouble, including you, if you don't speak. Well, Elijah, the rules are very clear, and I did hear clearly what the deputy uh, speaker of the House of Reps said. And the fact that that bill was thrown out before the sponsor could withdraw it means it had been killed and it cannot be reintroduced. But I want to bring your attention to what your candidate, it has not been what killed. your candidate in the last presidential election, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, said concerning the rejection of this bill. He said it is a missed, it is a missed opportunity because he's going for he, he he thinks that the six-year single tenure would help curb electoral malpractices in Nigeria. So what do you have against this uh, so-called six-year single tenure? In case, uh, in your own words, it is reintroduced. Well, <clears throat> I hope you you need to know that uh, Elijah Tiku Abubakar. Is a Nigerian with vast experience who had held public office, therefore must have an opinion. And uh, Buba Galadima, uh, as a public commentator, independently, irrespective of political party or where he comes from, might have an opinion. My grudge is not about sing six year single term or seven year single term. My grudge is that those in. <coughs> Once it is passed, those in authority today will benefit. That is my grudge. But I had attended the 1987 Constitution, Constituent Assembly, 1994 Constitutional Conference, and Jonathan's 2014 National Conference. I had always stood against a single, single term for any elected officer, local government, governor, or president, for my obvious reasons, that the electorate must have an opportunity to throw out bad government at every stage after four years. And I stand by that. Anybody that wants to argue on this matter with me, I am available for debate on Arise TV. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Now, I want to bring your attention to the recent list that was released by the United States, the special watch list in which Nigeria was added onto it. Now, Khan has come out to say that they, uh, they, they praised the addition of this on this list, but the SSA to the President of Media and Publicity has said that Nigeria has no business being on that list. However, they plan to discuss with their partners. I want to find out from you if you believe that Nigeria should be on that list, and as well as if you agree with that, what you think the areas of concern should be for the Buhari administration? Well, the fact of the matter is that I want to use a Hausa proverb. Idamba Rami, Mekaos and Cherami. The issue is that a blind mind is working and somebody on the sidewalks tells him, look, be careful, there is a, uh, uh, there is a big uh, pit hole in front of you. Then... The blind man turned to him and said, if there is no pit hole, what brought about the issue of a pit hole? Now, if we are being put on a watch list for anything by the world, if we are not guilty, why does it bother us? Does it bother me? Now, if they put Nigeria on a watch list of corrupt people or, or religious bigots, the government, this government is the architect of its own problem. Through I'm sorry to interrupt your train of thought. We're going to go on a quick actions. break, sir. I'm but when I come, when we come back, I would like you to land on your point. I'm coming. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show. We're still joined in our Abuja studios to review 2019 politics in Nigeria. Buba Galadima, a Nigerian politician 
who was appointed National Secretary for the Congress for Progressive Change Party, the CPC, formed in the run-up to the 2011 national elections as well. Now, before the break, I was asking about these special watches that we've been put on. And we were put on this list for uh, religious persecution. I just wanted to put that out there in Nigeria. You are about to land on a point, sir. No, I, I have already made my point. If the government is not guilty, why worry? If you accuse Buba Galadima of being a rogue or a thief, if I'm not one, why does this bother me? And this is why I brought the House of Proverb to justify my, my this thing. But this government is the architect of its own destruction. It is, they show to the world through their appointments, through their nopostic appointments, through uh, uh, postings, through positions being held by Nigerians, and through sectional appointments. This is what is calling for this kind of uh, 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 pressure from those who felt uh, they were sidelined uh, to cry for marginalization in, on the basis of their ethnicity, on the basis of their religion, or on the basis of where they come from. Once the government has a large heart and believes that from every corner of this country you can find a competent people that will reflect federal character, that they will make Nigerians feel that this country belongs to all of us, then there will be no problem. Nobody will call for, because it, uh, uh, nobody will call for putting Nigeria on a watch list on basis of religion, on the basis of ethnicity, on the, on the basis of where you come from. That is the situation we find ourselves. In fact, we are yet to see what other, other, other organizations in the world will tag, tag Nigeria before this, this tenure ends. I wish well for this my, for my country. All right, uh, real quickly, let's talk about the judiciary this year. Uh, it's a rundown of things happening in the polity, but the judiciary comes in, you know, very strong in all of this. Recently, a judge in the case of Omar Elijah said he'll recuse himself on the case uh, because I reported did you know, write a publication against him a couple of years back. I also want you to take this head on as regards the conduct of the judiciary in this year, 2019, as regards politics and electionary? Well, uh, this is our country. We must speak up irrespective of the consequences on our privileges and our status in life in our country. Uh, I find the judiciary working below expectation. Nobody, everybody in Nigeria, including you, Rafai, knows that elections in certain parts of this country, for example, uh, fell short of known standards. And the judiciary wasn't able for one, even one governor, to remove. Be rest assured that the judiciary will give a clean bill of uh, uh, this thing to the elections held in Kano. You had seen what had happened in Kano during the rerun election. You had seen what had happened in, on, in recently in Kogi and what had happened in Bayelsa. In both Kogi and Bayelsa, virtually the winners won in only three local governments of the state. And you have seen what had happened. In Bayelsa, the entire state was blocked out. Nobody was hearing anything from Bayelsa. In fact, all the airwaves were closed. We didn't know what would happen until when results were only announced. And you had seen the IG himself confirm to the whole world that what they had seen, the helicopter, gunship helicopter that were shooting at people, that the police that were seizing bullet boxes, he said they were fake police. I accept the almighty IG has said so. But the question to ask, the same IG told us that he deployed 35,000 strong men to do justice to the electoral system in Kogi. Yet, they could not arrest uh, uh, false police or whatever police you call them. And the judiciary, I am telling you, I can bet my life 
that they can, they, can, they, can, they can pass that election. Now, this is where our trouble lies. And consistently, minute in, hour in, day in, year out, people are losing confidence in the judiciary. What do we do? I call on retired justices of the Supreme Court, people who have the interest of justice in their hearts, to really sit down and constitute a committee to look at the sum of the judiciary pronouncements that were recently done. I will call on the MBA that their efforts and knowledge in law no more matters. Because in electoral laws, there is always a predetermined winner, and you go into that election with that winner in mind. And he, the INEC must justify. This is why I read here on the social media before I came in here that the thugs and the security agencies conscribed, the, conscri conscri conscribed results, INEC, INEC announces, and the courts confirm, affirm. Is that where we are going to be? We are, is, that, is that how we will run a civilized uh, a country in the 21st century? I feel, I feel completely disgusted. Completely. In fact, I am losing hope whether in my life I will ever see a free and fair election. I want to say something, Rafai. For example, we don't need government to fund INEC at all because we can request donor agencies that will bring materials and pay election officials so that we will have an independent election. If they, are not, if they can't do that, let them appoint me chairman of INEC. I will get funding. I don't need one cobble from the federal government of Nigeria. We don't need any security person, police or military, to, 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 to look after our elections. You had seen what had happened in the Human Rights Commission yesterday. The police were there when hooligans were brought in to attack innocent civil society groups. So what is the need of the police being there? Didn't you see police in, 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 in Kogi that they stood on one side, and even when you are attacked and run to them, they will, they will disappear and leave you to be, to, be, to, be, to be chased and beaten or killed by the thugs. Okay. okay. So there is no oh, need. Oh, okay, for Alaji, I also quickly want to please. ask you this. I want to quickly ask you this, Alaji. You talked about INEC. In the course of the year, because of our year political review, the EU wrote a report about the general election conducted by INEC. But it looks as though we didn't take a lot of learning yes. from that report going up to the Kogi and Bayasa elections. We're also going to have another elections next year. This 2020 we're getting into, Edo and some of the other elections. What are the learnings INEC should take as we go into the new year? And the things we could have learned from the last election? Right, right, don't, waste, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time, please. This INEC will not learn anything. They are, they are going to be given a, a, a list of who should be winner, and they will announce it without one. In fact, there is no need now for you to conduct the election. Why don't we do as the French colonists do? We elect only the president, only the president and members of the National Assembly. Let the president go ahead and appoint the governors and chairman of local council. It's better instead of we being killed and people are losing their lives over what? Since there is going to be no level playing field. INEC is incapacitated. They are errand boys of government, who, whosoever is in power. And I wish some of us had been close to this government. Some useless people that you see running around that they are pro Buhari people. If we sit down to tell you how they treated us when Buhari was an orphan politically, you will be shocked to see some of them showing their faces as, as admirers and Buharists. I, I cry and shed tears for this nation. Well, I like we you, you no are first. Yeah, first ending the, the title, I should say, from the last time you were here, you predicted the violence in the Kogi and Bayelsa elections. But on a serious note, uh, the rule of law has dominated headlines this year, and so bad that a national newspaper took a stand. I wonder what was your initial thought 
uh, to the Punch editorial concerning President Muhammadu Buhari's administration so far? They are 101 percent right, and we are yet to see anything. You that is speaking now, having the privilege to to anchor me, I hope God will save you from the tyranny of these people before they end their tenure. But some will argue, Alaji, that the fact that, you know, we have this protest, the fact that even a national daily can have that editorial about the president is attestation to the tolerance of this government to free speech and the tenets of democracy. What do you say to people like that? Do you, do you don't believe that they are tolerating me to say what I'm saying? To ever, because they know I'm important. I had no money to fight them. I cannot contest the election. I have no means of even survival. So they can allow me to shout, and they do, they do their worst against those that they intend to do. That is, the tr that is the truth of the matter. That does not mean anything, because they know as a fact that when they start attacking newspapers serially, it will land them in trouble with their masters offshore. Okay, Mr. There is nobody they fear in this government, like the Oibo people. Okay, Mr. Galdim, I want to let's talk about security now. Um, just two days ago, eight people were feared killed in fresh attacks in Niger State. However, looking at um, the Defense HQ in Benue, Taraba, and Nasarawa states, they've recorded progress and have even said that they will start to pull their troops out. The National Security Assessment Report was released last week, and you have said that fighting insurgency in Nigeria should not be done by brute force, but with intelligence and use of technology. I'm curious to know what your, your, your feedback is on this assessment report, as it doesn't have a breakdown of how this administration plans on using intelligence and technology to fight insurgency in Nigeria. What will happen? What's that Where is your village in Nigeria? Where is your village in Nigeria? I'm from Delta State, sir. You are from Delta? Yes, You sir. are still in Lagos. You didn't go for Christmas. No, sir, I didn't. Yeah? Are you, are you going? I'm not going, sir, but please, can we... Are you going for Christmas? I'm going to be in Lagos because I'm going to be working on Christmas Day, sir. However, can I get your assessment Thank on you. the fact Thank that much. technology maybe, and intelligence has not, not been discussed? Maybe you're not going because you don't have enough money to pay kidnappers if they abduct you. Have you heard what has happened in Damaturu the day before yesterday? Or what had happened in Bama? Or what had happened in Uba? And on the fringes of Borno and Adamawa? Let me tell you something that had happened. I have a son, one of my sons, he works for TCN. He is supposed to go and energize uh, 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 electricity install installations in Dambua. Dambua is 60 kilometers away from Maiduguri. The young chap lives in Maiduguri. Do you know how he arrived in Dambua? He has to leave Maiduguri 7 o'clock in the morning. Damaturu. Pochiskum uh, uh, to Darazau, then from Darazau to Duku, from Duku to, to, to Gombe, from Gombe to Biu, from Biu to Garkida, from Garkida to, to Gombe, from Gombe to Song, to Hong, to Kwanamubi, to Uba, to Askira, to, 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 to Chubok, then to Maiduguri. A distance of 60 kilometers he has to cover 1,500 kilometers. And when he finished energizing the power installations, he couldn't follow that road. He had to go through Kwanamubi, Yola, Numan, Gombe, Darazau, Patiskum, Maiduguri. It took him four days on the road. You call that security? Can anybody tell me truthfully that in Borno, you can go to seven local governments out of 27 on your own driving your car. Is there such a human being? I hope you need to know that the National Security Advisor comes from Borno and the Chief of Army Staff comes from, comes from Bew. Yesterday, throughout the night, there was a fight 
between insurgents and troops in Bill, where he comes from. Do you know that it takes... Yesterday, a friend of mine left in the morning for Kano. He couldn't arrive Kano until after 13 hours from Abuja, a distance that you cover, I cover in four hours. But sir, what are your recommendations? Do you know that we brought a Chinese? Let me, let me, let me come, let me come. We invited a Chinese man to come and visit the, the site, mining site of a friend in, in Yauli, Kebi State. Do you know that from Abuja to Mina, that takes one hour, it took them four and a half hours? You can't try, I have felt several friends that cannot go to Delta, cannot go to the Southeast, because on the queue, on the, on the traffic from Abuja to Lokoja, they will pull you out of the car and abduct you, you have to pay ransom. Can anybody dispute what I'm saying? Even though I had the, one of the ministers told us that all Nigerian roads are good now. I don't know whether it is the roads leading to his house. So this is, we have a, okay, we have okay, a problem. Okay, but Elijah. I don't want a serial, serial line. Okay. We must be factual in telling the nation what is the true position of things. Okay, Can Elijah. Ask the nation for forgiveness that we are going to make corrections. Okay, Elijah. Rather than we lie to them. Elijah, let me quickly go straight to this now. I want to talk about a group of people that you have constantly looked at and said, these are the people that didn't suffer with Buhari when President Buhari when he was a political orphan. Uh, this same group of people recently, the presidency come out to say that it's not a bad thing for you to have a cabal in government. What does a cabal mean? Maybe secret, you know, people that, you know, work in hand, you know, and they, they hold secrecy of state. Let's talk about this uh, so-called cabal. They've been having a running battle with the wife of the president. The wife of the president came out recently to equally talk. You remember how she talked about the jackal and the animal kingdom and said when, when the chief comes back, Everybody will go to Let, Let's talk about this cabal. Uh, what's your take on this, this, this cabal? Is there any at all, Alaji? Is there any at all? If there's any, what's your take? Well, well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, you, you have already given yourself the answer. You said that the government itself confirmed that in every regime there is a cabal, which means they have a cabal. And I can't say anything more than what the wife of the president herself has said, that this government is being run by only two people whom she had not seen in our 15 years of struggle with General Buhari when we were with him. We have never seen them contribute anything, either financially, physically, or even through voting. So what am I going to say? Those that need to confirm the truth have confirmed. Government itself confirmed that they have. Alaji, I just want to take you. The president confirmed that they have. Alaji, I just want to I just want to take you on this real quickly. Is it that you, you don't talk to President Buhari any longer? I mean, you were in trenches with President Buhari. You should have a personal relationship with President Buhari. Is it that you, don't, you can't pick up the phone now and call President Buhari despite your days together at the CPC? What is happening? I hope you know that my, son, my first son died. He didn't call me to, to, to condole me. I hope you know that one. You heard about that? My first son, 33-year-old died. He didn't pick phone to condole me. I see some people who fought us when we were with him, lost relatives, not children. He was issuing national statement to condole them. So that is personal, please. That is personal. It is his right uh, to have friends of his choice, but he has no right to determine who will be his relative. So I leave it at that. We are talking about our nation, Rafai, Nigeria. How can we make Nigeria better? And we can't make Nigeria better if we don't have a proper electoral system, if we don't have a neutral security agencies that will work for the nation rather than a transient uh, government or an individual. And when we have a robust judiciary in the, in the, in the person of people like uh, Justice Ademola, Irikefe, uh, Ove Whiskey, uh, Aniagolu, and others. Those that will stand the test of time and look at the authorities into their face and tell them, you are wrong. We don't have such today. That it is the, it, the script given to them that they will go and read. I'm sorry. 
Well, I withdraw. I'll let you go, Ladima. First, let's offer our own condolences to you. Um, we do sympathize with you for your loss. We've talked about security, which is one of the promises of this administration. It also promises a fight against corruption and improving the economy. I wonder what your thoughts are so far this year, especially in the fight against corruption. There seems to have been uh, some um, increased pace. I mean, some huge convictions, some people would say. But what are your thoughts on that? And my second question to you would be, it's been quite the year in Nigerian politics. Your party and your candidate lost the general election. Have you recovered from that loss? And what would be your New Year goal? <laughs> Our New Year goal is that uh, justice should always prevail in all facets of human endeavor in our country. That is my New Year goal. And I, Buba Galadima, will continue to fight until the last drop of my blood for electoral, electoral justice. And unless we have electoral justice and the people have the ability and the power through the ballot box to remove any government, Nigeria will never see development. Will never see development. Because people, people see themselves as kings, people see themselves as God, and uh, I'm sorry, with that kind of posture, Nigeria can go uh, uh, nowhere. And on the issue of, uh, what did you say? Corruption and the economy. Uh, ru rule of law. It, yeah, you said? Corruption and the economy. Hello? The fight against corruption. It's okay. On the issue of, uh, I'm coming, I'm, yes, I got it. There is no fight against corruption. Because if there is a fight against corruption, no member of this government should today sleep in his house. All of them should be arrested. They have told us, I didn't manufacture, that they borrowed 16 trillion naira in the last four years. And Nigerians are gullible. You are just sleeping. People are sharing our commonwealth. 16 trillion naira. Let anybody tell me in this country that there is a project to the benefit of the people worth 100 million naira in his state. Let that person come out for a debate with me here. So where is the rest of the money? If you are accusing other people of being corrupt, now they are approving for 29 million US dollars or billion dollars for them. To do what? They have no managerial capacity to manage that money. They will just kill the money. You talk of economy. Let anybody go around Abuja here and come out with the list of 10 construction projects that employs 50 people in the whole of Abuja, where you used to have 1 million sites that reactivates economic activity always in this Abuja. This is why you can't walk on the streets of Abuja making phone call. Somebody will come and seize it. A lady cannot walk with her bag. It will be seized and everybody is closing his ears and eyes as if we don't know what is happening. You are in Lagos. I don't know where you are located, Arise TV. But go to the wharf. Today I have a friend of mine who has a contract to supply uh, 1,000 tons of sesame seeds to a Chinese company. As I speak to you, he lost, he lost the contract. It was cancelled because he bought the sesame seeds, cleaned the sesame seeds, and took it to Lagos two and a half months. 37 trailers or containers, 40-foot containers of sesame seeds are still lying on the streets of Lagos. They can't get into the port. And if you hear what you have to spend before you get your, 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 your goods for export to, to get foreign exchange for Nigeria into the wharf. All of you will cry in tears. I want to borrow from General T.Y. Danjuma. If you hear, and people pretend here in Abuja that they don't know what is happening. Mm. It's because Nigerians are gullible people. They can't speak. They, can't, they don't know their rights. Well, well, is that how well, we are going to survive? Well, well, one thing is certain, Alaji. I like to is thank you. Is that fighting corruption? 
Alaji, I, 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 I like to thank you so much. One thing is certain, in the new year, we will still have a lot ah. of this conversation, you know, as regards our nation, because our nation, Nigeria, is dear to us. Thank you so much, Alaji, uh, for your time. And uh, have, have a happy new year and compliments of the season, Alaji. It's, thank you so much. Uh, Rufai, compliments of the season for all of you, but it seems like whenever you have me, you keep on turning the uh, hand of the clock. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Alaji, 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 you know what they say. Time flies when you're having fun. You are having <laughs> fun with us. We're having fun with you. That's why time flies. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Alaji. That brings us to the end of the show today. I'm Rufai Yosini. I'm Adesua Omoran, wishing you a Merry Christmas.